Good, uh, good afternoon, traders. Good afternoon. I uh, hope you can uh, hear me. Hope you can uh, see me on this uh, on this uh, lovely autumn's uh, afternoon. Uh, welcome to uh, the next in Admiral's uh, webinar series. Here we are today to talk about intermarket relationships uh, and, in particular, you know how we can uh, look to uh, to trade them. Uh, Fascinating subject as always. Okay, give uh, beginner traders a little bit of insight into sort of the bigger picture of the market. Uh, if you have experience of intermarket relationships, it'd be great to, to hear what your own sort of uh, knowledge and experience and how you've used them in your own trading. Uh, if you are uh, joining us for the first time, you are very very welcome. If you're watching this later on demand on the uh, Admiral's uh, YouTube channel, uh, then uh, fantastic, great to see you here. Welcome and uh, enjoy the session. Uh, be sure to uh, subscribe to the uh, Admiral's uh, YouTube channel uh, and you know if you found this useful be uh, by all means give us a uh, bit of a thumbs up so without uh, further ado let's uh sort of bring up the uh, the slides and have a chat about intermarket relationships so just uh, bear with us here a second bring this all up we should uh, be good to go there we go excellent excellent great Great to see you here, Vincenzo. Always a pleasure to have you here with us, join us. So uh, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Understanding intermarket relationships and how to trade them. Um, as I said a little bit earlier on, I appreciate that uh, you know here at uh, Admiral's webinars, we have a very global audience, but we also have a, a broad spectrum in terms of uh, people's trading experience from uh, people who are complete beginners to, to people who've been trading for, for many, many years. You're all very, very welcome here. Hopefully what we're going to be able to do is to give you know, beginners just a bit of an understanding about what intermarket relationships are, you know, how they sort of show up in the uh, markets and how you can utilise that to, uh, to aid your own trading decisions. Uh, for those of you who are experienced traders watching it, will hopefully be one or two extra little uh, elements in there that just might help you and add to your own particular uh, uh, sort of trading knowledge and experience. So here we are, Admirals, a uh, Forex and CFD broker with a global presence uh, and local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products uh, and providing you with the opportunity to engage with markets using both the MT4 and MT5 platform and the Admiral Supreme Edition. If you have any questions, be sure to get in touch with your account representative and they'll be very happy to help guide you. Uh, and for more uh, up-to-date information and content, be sure to follow us on our Telegram channel there. You can see there at Admirals. Of course, because it's on Telegram, you know, we are actually putting on elements there all the time. And you'll actually see, uh, you know, fascinating uh, bits of content popping up there all the time. Uh, and in particular for uh, November, here we have a uh, what we're calling trade days, which provides you uh, up to 50% cash back uh, on your uh, on your trading. Just ensure that you are uh, registered before the November the 14th. You can see the link there. If you can't click on that link, then by all means, you know, sort of just go on to the Admiral's website and you'll be able to find the necessary link there. So what should we talk about today? Well. We're going to talk about intermarket relationships, but I appreciate for complete beginners just trying to think, well, you know, actually, what are intermarket relationships for? You know, what, what do they do? How can we identify them on our charts? We'll go through that. And how do we start to look to create a simple trade plan for successful trading of intermarket relationships? And then at the end of the, the slides of this time, what we'll do is we'll switch across to the Admiral's platform and actually just have a look at a few of them. In, uh, in sort of in, the, in live markets, which uh, I find is always uh, really helpful and useful. So be sure to stay with us till the end to, to get that uh, sort of insight into the sort of present day markets. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Paul. Uh, I've traded for many years, trading for hedge funds and other clients. Uh, my own primary focus for my trading is FX indices commodities. Uh, I tend to be a trend trader for sort of longer term trading uh, and a reversal and mean reversion trader for shorter intraday trading. So let's have a talk about understanding uh, understanding intermarket relationships. Um, as I said, you know, it's always uh, fascinating to sort of hear what people's experience of that. You know, it'd be great to know, you know, what your own experience and knowledge of intermarket relationships is. Be sure to put it in the chat box. Maybe you've never even heard the term because you're a complete beginner. That's okay. What we're here for, okay, you'll understand it by the end of this session. Or alternatively, maybe you're, you know, you're well aware and then actually use a lot, utilize elements of it in your own particular uh, uh, trading setups. 
Either way, you know, new traders are often left wondering why uh, certain instruments appear to move in unison with uh, with other instruments, or how certain instruments move in an inverse direction to others. Uh, and this is where traders need to first understand currency correlations, and then also moving on to intermarket relationships. There are certain simple correlations that can be utilized by traders to help them identify trade setups or avoid possible traps. And that in itself can be very useful for us. Today, we're going to start looking at currency correlations. And then what we'll do is we'll develop that in the idea into intermarket relationships, how to understand them, where you see them, and ideally how to utilize them in your own trading. So as I said, we'll start with a couple of slides on currency correlations, all right? So to understand, as I said, if you're a new trader, okay, you might just not even be aware of currency correlations. This is an opportunity just to uh, sort of uh, uh, give you an opportunity to raise your knowledge and awareness about, uh, about this particular concept. So not unsurprisingly, correlations about the relationship between two instruments uh, and in particular, how they move in relation to each other. Uh, and uh, for example, currency correlation is the statistical measure of whether two currency pairs move in the same, opposite, or totally random directions. And all professional traders need to understand these correlations. It can be enormously beneficial for a, a, you know, a wide range of reasons, which we'll look at when we look at the charts. It's a little bit easier to explain and understand when we look at it. But you know, all traders need to understand and be aware of currency correlations. Even if you don't use them as part of your own trading uh, methods, it's important for you to understand know them just as a general understanding of the bigger picture of the markets. So, you know, if you uh, want to dig into the detail of it, okay, you know, uh, correlation is computed into what is known as the correlation coefficient, which ranges between then uh, minus one and uh, plus plus one. Uh, a perfect positive correlation, which is a correlation coefficient of plus one, implies that the two currency pairs will move in the same direction 100% of the time. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? A perfect negative correlation, which is a currency coefficient, a correlation coefficient of minus negative one, means that the currency pair will move in the opposite direction 100% of the time. And if the correlation is zero, the movement between the two currency pairs is set up zero or no correlation. They are effectively completely independent. You know, and it's uh, it's true. You know, not not everything has a uh, has a you know currency correlation. You'll see that some are you know positively correlated, some are negatively correlated, some move completely independently of their uh, of their own volition. Uh, and you know, and that's absolutely fine. Okay, but once you start to recognise and understand a few of those currency correlations, well, then basically, you know, it just it helps you in building a picture of what's going on in the market. So here's an example, and this is correlations regarding the kind of the euro against the US dollar. Let's get the old drawing tool up here. here. You know, and, and actually what they're like over one week, one week, one month, three months, six months, a year, right? And, and against other currency pairs, okay? So, you know, what we can see here is, you know, the euro US dollar over one week against the dollar Swiss franc, okay, has a almost perfect negative correlation of minus one doesn't it so effectively as the euro us dollar goes up the dollar swiss franc goes down all right and that's you know useful and you can see that you know over one week the us dollar against the cad has you know an almost perfect negative correlation the aussie dollar has you know almost positive almost plus one um correlation uh, and the kiwi dollar is you know 0.93 so there is still a strong correlation uh, as is with uh, euro yen but we can see you know the us dollar yen not so much, okay? Not so much as negative 0.2. So it's not a terribly, it's a negative correlation. It's not a terribly strong correlation, uh, particularly there. What you can see is that, you know, for dollar Swiss franc in particular, you know, when you look at it over a month, okay, over three months, six months, a year, you can see that there is a pretty strong constant negative correlation on that. And we'll have a little look at that on the charts there. Any of you here in the room might try to understand, would you, any of you understand exactly why that might be? Why that might be that sort of A, because the correlation is, you know, is, is negative and why it's so particularly strong. You get, uh, you know, if you get uh, extra marks, if you understand what uh, what that particularly uh, is, you know, you can get that, uh, you get a, a special, a special sort of a, 
special rosette for being a winner off uh, off uh, off myself. But uh, you know, if you look at this, you know, we can see here that you know, in terms of correlation, well, you know, if we look at like one year with the euro sterling, 0 0.02, okay, so it's effectively effectively, you know, it's it's neutral, okay, you know, just the euro dollar and euro uh, euro sterling tend to operate and move in their own different uh, in their own different ways over the year over that particular year all right and as i said you know it, it, some people might look at that and just not necessarily fully understand it okay you just think it's you know it's just a load of numbers others of you you know might have picked up on particular patterns or particular correlations if you're a very uh, sharp you'll have realized that actually one of the where the correlations are strongest where also have the uh, the us dollar in there as well okay so you know you've got Euro dollars against dollar Swiss franc, dollar Canadian, Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar, etc. You know these are some of the very strongest, okay, because they have an element of the uh, of the US dollar. In it. And, and if you want to read more, if you you know want to really dig into that more, it's a fact that you can Google how to calculate currency correlations with Excel, which you can uh, actually do. But what you'll find these days is that you know if you look on the uh, Admiral's website, you'll be actually able to see that there are a uh, and there are tools on there that will give you a bit of help with that in itself. So, you know, here's a, uh, here's a particular example here for us. What, we, what have we got here? Uh, this is the four hour chart, okay? 240 minute Euro US dollar versus dollar Swiss franc. Remember what we said, okay, on that, just looking at that previous, okay, that previous example that, you know, there's a strong negative correlation between Euro dollar and dollar Swiss franc. What we can see here is, you know, Euro dollar, you know, it made its, uh, made its highs, okay, uh, and uh, into a period of consolidation before it effectively fell, pulled back, and fell again okay on the uh, on the other side okay us dollar against swiss franc okay made it uh, made its high and then effectively it rose before it pulled back and then rose again okay so hopefully you can see there you know there is a negative correlation right? and that is a lot of that is to do with you know what's going on there with the uh, the us dollar and also the relationship between the euro and the swiss franc as well but you know once you start to see that especially for a new trader Especially for a new trader, you actually you know you can actually start to utilize that. And you know uh, what I uh, used to is a is a uh, is a you know an anecdote from the, the the long and dark distant past is that you know invariably back in the day what we'd actually see is that the you know the average range on the euro dollar would be about well, at that time was about seventy pips, okay, whereas the average range on the dollar against the Swiss franc used to be about one hundred and twenty five to one hundred and thirty uh, pips. So it was like almost like another good. 50% and above higher average range. Why was that useful to me? Why does it help? Well, actually what we found is that when I was intraday trading is that very often I would find that, you know, I'd get the same setup or an inverse setup. And invariably what I would look to do is I, you know, I might see the two setups, but if I had to choose which one to take, I would normally take it on the dollar against the Swiss franc in those days, because I knew because of the average range, it meant that you know, the likelihood of it going more pip to my direction was, uh, was greater. And so that would actually help me. So it's just a very quick, simple sort of way that, you know, that you can start to utilize currency correlations to, to help you with your own training. And it's something that I did, I did myself. But to begin with, you know, especially if you're, you know, just a new trader, you know, getting to grips with markets, what is important for you is to be able to understand that, you know, that the, these correlations do exist between certain, you know, certain currency pairs, okay, and we'll move on from that in a moment. And actually, once you start to recognize that, that can be enormously useful, okay, enormously helpful for you as a trader, you start to really get a, an idea, it can really help you. And if you're making trade choices, okay, you know, and you're starting to see these correlations playing out, okay, it should just give you a little bit of confidence, okay, just a little bit of, you know, a little bit of backup that the, the, the trades that you've taken, you know, are, uh, are correct because they're, you know, because of what you're seeing there. Um, here's a here's another one that's uh, um, pretty uh, uh, pretty strong correlated there. Okay, and what we're looking at here is the weekly chart on the euro uh, sterling versus sterling against Swiss franc, uh, and hopefully you can uh, hopefully you can see that you know you know euro against the uh, sterling on the weekly, it rose before it dropped down into a double top, before rallying strongly and then into a sort of kind of a you know blow off top before it pulled away, and if we look at the pound against Swiss franc. You know, we fell until we sort of rallied all the way up into a double top before we collapsed, which then basically accelerated into sort of, you know, a kind of a blow off bottom, so to speak, uh, before we just rallied up there. So hopefully there you can even see once again 
there is that negative correlation, right, between euro sterling and sterling Swiss franc, right? And why would that be? Well, and all that's because you've got the euro and Swiss franc as part of it, but also, you know, the sterling is part of it. You know, and as I said, that's on a weekly chart, but you will see it across all sorts of time frames. But what you will find as that uh, that little table we looked at earlier shows that you know that those those correlations can be you know can differ a little bit over time frames. What you tend to find, what you tend to find is that invariably what you'll see is that you know the strongest you know those strong correlations they you know they tend to exist for a, for a good while across all particular time frames. So hopefully that just gives you a little idea as you can how to utilize it. If, you know, if you're seeing a trade on euro sterling, you know, and you've got a trade signal for it to, to rise, we're hopefully seeing pound against Swiss franc drop will also just give you a little bit of a little bit of help, a little bit of hint that in fact, you know, the, the, the trade is playing out, you know, the, the currencies are moving as we would expect them to based upon their correlations. So that was currency correlations. It's a place to start with. You know, many of us are FX traders. Many you know start to utilize that in their own particular trading style. But as the slide says, not only do we see correlations between currencies, but we also see such correlations with currencies and different asset classes themselves. And this, okay, this is very often called intermarket analysis, right? This is really the, the, the relationship between not only just FX, but actually lots of different asset classes, okay? And as we go in to have a look at them, you can find that it's actually, it's, it's fascinating, okay? It's really, can be really beneficial, really helpful, and also just give you a bit of a broader picture of, you know, what's actually going on in terms of the underlying health of that particular market. What we found is that, you know, the, the GFC of 2008, destroyed or changed many of the kind of, let's say, the core elements of intermarket analysis for several years. However, we've now seen some return to standard trends, and we've also seen other trends that have been created. And also what we have seen you know, in the last 18 months, okay, with sort of the, uh, let's call it the COVID crash and the, you know, the COVID pandemic response, that in itself has created a particular, uh, a particular uh, uh, correlations, relationships between certain uh, instruments for certain periods of time we came and if we have the time we will we will look into a little bit of that later on so you know here's a, here's an example of another this is the weekly us oil wti versus versus the us dollar canadian dollar uh, and what we can see you know is that uh, you know in this particular case here and, you know, we'll look at it in live in a moment. Is that, you know, as uh, as you know, as the dollar has uh, dollar has kind of risen at the same time as the uh, the oil price collapsed. Okay, uh, why would that be? Why what's the relevance there? Well, of course, you know, we've got dollar against Canadian dollar. So you know, at, at that particular time, Canadian dollar, you know, it's one of their major exports, oil, right? So when the oil price is going up. That tends to, you know, sort of, you know, reflect upon strength in the Canadian dollar. Furthermore, you know, the biggest uh, client customer is the US. Okay, so of course, you know, they are very, uh, very heavily reliant on uh, on oil, uh, regardless of the kind of uh, Mr. Biden and his uh, sort of a uh, uh, green credentials and green pressure. They still effectively use, you know, a huge amount of uh, of oil, and invariably, so of course, when the oil price drops, that is effectively that is good for the US. It's good for the US economy, right? So, so you know, there's not a surprise to see that kind of inverse relationship between, you know, uh, or, you know, between oil and also between sort of, you know, the US dollar and the US dollar Canadian dollar there. Okay, uh, and as I said. You know, we've seen that recently as well, which we'll look at in a moment. You know, this, you know, this is from a, uh, a few years back, but it's just a because I just want to show a big picture, okay, example of it, all right? But we'll see it across all sorts of time frames. And as I said, you know, it can be helpful. You know, if you, you know, if you're a trader of, you know, if you're a trader of oil, okay, well, invariably, you know, that can be sort of, you know, just beneficial to you to see how that is implicating on the uh, the US dollar Canadian dollar uh, uh, pair, uh, you know, and one or two other pairs as well, which are sensitive to oil, which will. Which we'll also look at as we go further down further down our session here. Um, here's uh, you know here's a kind of a, another sort of you know a strange one is is a kind of the uh, dollar Canadian dollar uh, versus gold. Uh, you know why would this be of uh, a relevance or interest to us? Well, you know once again 
right? Gold is a uh, is is one of you know Canada's major exports. So when we get you know it's not unsurprising that you know when we get to see gold in a uh, in a strong trend, okay, strong move as you can see there. Well, it's no surprise that actually you know, we see that invariably you know kind of the Canadian dollar, okay, is strengthening as well, right? It's not always you can see the relationship isn't you know isn't as clear cut as perhaps you know. Um, you know, uh, euro dollar against dollar Swiss franc, but there is a relationship there. There is an intermarket relationship there. Okay, so when we see gold strengthening, we also tend to see Canadian dollar strengthening, and you know, and vice versa. The flip side of that, you know, okay, if gold is weakening, we also start to see Canadian dollar weakening, and then of course that means Canadian dollar weakens against the the, the currency pairs that it's traded against as well. So. You know, as I say this today, you know, we've we've had, you know, we've had a bump in uh, the gold price, you know, today, okay, you know, and you'd probably be able to see how that kind of relationship has, uh, has you know, has, has played out even just on a short or intraday basis. Uh, and as I said, if we've got time, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll switch across and have a little look at that. Here's another part of intermarket uh, um, relationships, okay, and then how we can see that. This is the uh, the monthly Nikkei, okay, the main Japanese stock index against the uh, the Japanese yen. So you know what we see here, you know this, these are monthly charts, and what we can see is you know for this particular period here, what we had was very. This is the Japan. This is you know this is actually dollar against Japanese yen, which effectively means you know the U.S. dollar was strengthening, the Japanese yen was weakening. And at the same time, what we also got to see was basically the, the Nikkei rising as well. Why would that be? Well, what we have to remember is, you know, Japan is a, you know, is a, is a clearly a very strictly, you know, export economy. Okay, their economy is, you know, driven by their companies being able to, you know, export the, the vast majority of their uh, production. Uh, and what we see is, of course, is that that means that, you know, uh, Japanese companies are, and the Japanese economy at whole is very sensitive to the price of the Japanese yen. So when is in this case, the Japanese yen is weakening. In that case, the dollar strengthening the Japanese yen is weakening. That, okay, is good for Japanese companies because that means their exports will be cheaper across the world, which means increasing their likely, you know, increased revenue or right to increase profits. Hence why we see the Nikkei rising, okay? Uh, and the flip of that happens as well. When we see, you know, invariably, you know, when, you know, the Japanese yen is a safe haven currency, when we see, you know, turmoil in the world, uh, we see the Japanese yen strengthen. When we see the Japanese yen strengthen, well, then invariably what that means is that, you know, it kind of like drags on the Nikkei, weighs upon those Japanese uh, companies and the index. And so we tend to see them fall. So once again, it's about, you know, understanding, okay, that, you know, that kind of intermarket, uh, intermarket, you know, uh, sort of, you know, analysis is part of the, you know, the, you know, that only the, the kind of the currency correlation, the Nikkei, but the kind of the global picture all coming together. And as a trader, you know, you can utilize that if you're, you know, maybe you're an index trader, okay. So if you're an index trader trading the Nikkei, you are also going to be very clearly watching what goes on with the Japanese yen, okay. You're going to be very clearly and very sensitive because we know that the Nikkei itself is very sensitive to it. So, you know, you'd be smart to basically not only just look at the Nikkei chart, but actually to be looking at charts of the Japanese yen as well. Hey, or alternatively, maybe you're a Japanese yen trader. Okay, maybe that's what you like. But also, you know, once you start to see, all right, you know, strong trends in the Japanese yen, whether it be the upside or the downside, well, then, you know, that might be an opportunity for you to trade in the Japanese indexes based upon your knowledge, okay, of the big trends that are occurring at that time in the Japanese yen. So it just shows you how you know that you you know your a little bit of analysis can basically be you know you know sort of uh, extrapolated to, to being able to sort of use across a broader range of instruments. Here's a, another one okay where we have positive correlation, which is the weekly Dow versus the Japanese Nikkei. Okay, uh, you know, and this is a, this is you know kind of a little bit of a broader picture, all right. And and you know you know this, and this my own personal opinion is that with the rise of you know uh, uh, you know uh, 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 algos okay operating in markets, what we tend to see is you know especially across you know, some of the major indexes, is it's almost you know they are almost kind of moving unison. They're actually all sort of kind of 
correlated in terms of how they actually move together. Uh, and, you know, it's you're almost like getting to a point of almost like, you know, you know, one world global index, okay, because they all tend to move um, very, very uh, uh, closely these days. And that's when we know, you can see that the algos are just following each other. And so when we see in the big American indexes, so you're seeing, you know, the Dow, okay, the uh, S&P 500, the NASDAQ, you know, the Russell 2000 as well, is that, you know, very often what we'll see is, you know, as in this particular case, is that you know as as the uh, as effectively you know the Dow rallied and then went into a you know period of consolidation, not unsurprisingly you know, the Nikkei rallied and then went into a period of consolidation. Okay, that is not unusual for you to see the kind of same things occurring, and once again that can be you know that can help you right. You know if you're an index trader, okay, being able to see that all of the indices are moving in you know, correlated moves together. That gives you a bit of confidence. It just shows you that you know the AIs or you know, the, the the algos are you know working away, okay, doing their job, all right. And actually, you know, you don't particularly want to fight them. What you're looking to do is actually look to find a way to surf off the back of them. That's the uh, that I would suggest the kind of the smarter way for you to uh, the smarter way for you to operate. Uh, and here's uh, another one in terms of you know having correlations okay across you know different as instruments and what we have here is you know we've got you know once again uh, US oil okay WTI versus the uh, Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen uh, and hopefully you can see that you know there's a you know there's a good correlation there okay in terms of you know you know as as, as you know oil goes up and then it comes down so does CAD yen go up then it comes down okay there is a positive correlation there. Why is that? Well, we you know alluded to a little bit earlier that you know uh, Japanese yen is a you know it's an export economy, okay, but also it is it imports. I think it's about ninety eight percent of its oil needs, okay, and for you know for a large industrialized economy, they have you know severe demands for uh, for for energy, uh, and so invariably when the oil price rises, that can be actually you know that can have a, a you know a, a knock on impact on both you know uh, japanese yen uh, and also the uh, and also you know which you know, can have a knock-on impact on uh, um, on the sort of the japanese index equally remember what we said a bit earlier is that you know the canadian dollar is you know the, the canadian economy is is very energy intensive in terms of you know it's it's driven by it and they export the vast majority of the energy of that oil so when the oil prices when the oil price is rallying as you can see there well, then invariably that tends to be very good for the Canadian dollar. The Canadian dollar strengthens, all right? And if the Canadian, you know, if the, if the oil price is rising, that means you get a Canadian dollar that is strengthening and a Japanese yen that is weakening, okay? So invariably, as I said, you get that kind of positive correlation that can that can help you. You know, and I often tell the, the story of a, of a chap I used to know many years ago who, you know, who, who claimed himself to be uh, an oil trader, but actually, all he did was trade the four hour charts on the Canadian dollar against the Japanese yen. That's actually what he did because very often it's used as a proxy for oil. OK, very often it's used as a proxy for oil. Some people would prefer to trade CAD yen, right? Because um, the spreads, depending upon where you trade, the spreads can be uh, they can be smaller. Uh, also, the, the trading range can be, uh, can be bigger and it can be less volatile than oil can sometimes move at. OK, so, you know, it's a way to, to utilize that. So, you know, if you want to have a look, you can have a look at, you know, oil against CAD yen to see when they are very, very closely, uh, very closely correlated. Uh, and one of the other things we, we see here, and this is you know really over this is over you know this is this is us for the last few years in terms of you know uh, of QE and, and you know, quantitative easing and how that has had you know it's kind of a small reflection, excuse me, a small reflection on it. It is a case of this is the pound against US dollar versus the FTSE 100, the main UK index. Uh, and, you know, it's an inverse correlation. Hopefully you can kind of, you know, see that as, as you know, in this particular case, as the pound, you know, the US dollar has, uh, has dropped, you know, so the, the FTSE has risen. So there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that, you know. Uh, uh, one, okay, we've got, you know, you got start, sterling weakening, which means you get the dollar strengthening. But also what you're finding is the FTSE 100, okay, is the, you know, it's the, it is the uh, industry benchmark for the top 100 countries, uh, top 100 companies in the uh, in the country, okay, in the United Kingdom. However, 
you know, increasingly the FTSE 100 is not a terribly good reflector of the UK economy. What you find is the vast majority of the companies in the FTSE 100 are truly global companies who effectively, you know, uh, make an awful lot of their revenues and profits, uh, you know, in, in global markets. So invariably what happens is when sterling is dropping in price, what that actually means is, of course, is the other countries or the other you know, currencies are increasing in strength. And what that means is that that reflects better for those companies on the FTSE 100. You know, it basically just increases, just looks in their revenues and, and margins can look you know, far, far better, making them far more attractive uh, as, a, as a buying proposition, which means, you know, investors will look to, to buy those companies even more. So. You know, that is uh, that is one of the things we've seen. Another kind of flip side of that is that, you know, we saw for many years is that, you know, as as uh, as QE was going, uh, it was uh, kind of, let's say, picking up steam a few years ago. You know, as you know, as the central banks were effectively, you know, sort of basically creating money out of air and printing money, however you wish to, to describe it. OK, and pushing that into the uh, into the market through the uh, through the banks. What that often meant was that we saw that nations we saw that nations um, uh, currency drop. But that nation's uh, equity index rise because actually a lot of those a lot of those banks just took that money and just basically used it to buy equities. Okay, so uh, you know that's that's what we uh, that's what we are seeing there. Okay, it's not as um, um it's not as dramatic as we were as we saw a few years ago, but there is still there is still an element to that. And as we start to you know as as uh, economies start to you know kind of grow and come out of that kind of post pandemic uh, would you call it crash lull however you wish to describe it. And as we start to see you know, economies strengthen, as we start to see the, you know, certainly in the you know, kind of the US and maybe other countries raising interest rates or sort of tapering their support for markets, that might have, you know, that will have a, you know, a, a reverse implication on, uh, on those particular things. What we might see is we might see, you know, the, the nation's currencies rise, whereas actually the nation's indices start to, uh, to roll over. Um, you know, and another kind of example of that here is you know, these are four hour charts. This is, you know, the euro dollar against the, the DAX 30. OK, it would have been the DAX 30 now. It's the DAX 40, isn't it? We've, you know, in the last few weeks, we've moved uh, we've moved on to that. But, um, you know, hopefully what you can see, and it's a bit of a reflection of what we talked about there is that, you know, is there's that inverse correlation. OK, um, as the, uh, the euro dollar has, uh, has, has dropped because the euro is weakening, the, the DAX has risen. You know, once again, remember, um, you know, a little bit a about the QE element of it, namely that you know we've had uh, you know as 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 you know in terms of the ECB have you know created and uh, printed uh, euros. Okay, that money went to banks who then basically you know put it into equity indexes. But what we saw was you know at the same time, okay, is the you know that also had a, a, an impact on very the the in this say the trade blocks currency. So you had the currency you know currency dropping, but the equity indexes rising. You know what you'll find is that in fact you know that actually has kind of then has a sort of you know there's a momentum effect a kind of double bubble because you know like Japan who we just looked at Germany is very much driven by its export economy and what helps its export economy is the euro you know getting weaker and weaker okay that means that you know German exports are much more competitive so not unsurprising when we see that kind of euro weakening it just kind of adds more fuel to the flame for for the for the DAX to rise and you know. One of the reasons that why we've seen you know DAX sort of you know rise and rally its way to to, to all time highs over the last couple of years. So you know we've just looked there at you know firstly currency correlations and then some you know some of the kind of intermarket analysis in between those. Okay, why is it important? What does it actually you know what is it actually used for? How can it be helped? Well, it can help eliminate counterproductive trading. Right? You know what it means is that you know if you you know you might actually only find yourself if you look through your uh, trading diary, where you find that you actually were having effectively double, treble trades, okay, on the same instrument. Whereas in fact, actually, you know, you only need to basically trade be trading one of those particular instruments because of the way that the markets are currently correlated. It will also allow some traders to kind of leverage profits, all right, because, you know, what you might see, remember what I was saying earlier in terms of, you know, the euro dollar against the dollar Swiss franc, right, you know, if you've got a, a trade on those two pairs, well, you might actually look to the one that would actually move the furthest and the fastest because that would be the one you'd want to run in order to, to leverage your profits. It might allow some traders to diversify risk, right, in terms of being able to uh, to be able to sort of, you know, either a focus on one of the pairs that where there might be a current correlation 
or invariably actually share out okay share out their kind of their risk across different um, different particular uh, different particular uh, correlated instruments what it can also do is, you know, is also can be used to sort of, you know, hedge risk. Okay, you know, you'd be able to sort of, you know, as I said a bit earlier on, is that you know, it's, you know, once you start to see that there is that correlation, that actually elements are moving to to help support you. Well, then invariably, you know, especially if you're an options trader, be able to utilize that to just hedge your risk in the market. One of the things that it can be very useful for, and one of the ways I particularly like to to use it myself. Is that you can actually get in a way to confirm breakouts and avoid fake outs all right when you're actually able to see you know or you're trading elements or instruments that are you know either just currently correlated or there is an intermarket um relationship well then you can utilize that especially i find you know on a shorter time frames it can actually just help give you an idea of when you're when the breakout in the instrument you're trading is actually a true breakout you know if you start to see fake outs across you know three or four you know sort of you know uh, uh, correlated instruments that's just giving me, you know, a heads up that invariably the breakout is likely to fail, and in fact, actually, I should be getting ready to trade a fake out, false breakout. That's actually what I should be looking to, to, to work with. So here's some homework for you. Okay, here's how you can start to look to to utilize this information that we've just been through today. So uh, why not go back and have a little look at your most popular trading instruments? Which are the ones that you actually focus on the most? Do they have a currency correlation, right? First and foremost, do they have a you know, currency correlation, you know, with firstly other currencies? Okay, that's not that difficult to, to find out these days. As I said, there's tools on the internet, there's tools on the Admiral's website that will actually uh, help you. Uh, or you know, or do they actually have a, a wider intermarket relationship with other instruments? Okay, and, and if they if they you know if they do and you weren't aware of it. Well, you know, now's the time to start building that into your trading plan, into your trading process. As it says, uh, study them if they do. You might be fascinated by actually what comes up and what you see across those particular charts. You know, and most importantly for us as traders, is there something in there that can help you in your trading decisions? Is there something you can add to your, uh, you, know, you know, trading decision matrix? Do you see ways to be able to confirm breakouts or fakeouts in your trading if there is, you know, correlations and in intermarket relationships? Are there correlated trends, all right? Or are there even correlated reversals, okay? Sometimes you'll see, especially, you know, across some, you know, if it's a particular currency pair, you might actually see correlated trends build up, okay, across them, or you might actually see correlated reversals there, okay? And your elements that sort of just give you an idea that, you know, that trade is, you know, that particular currency, you know, its trend is coming to an end and it's looking to change. And that can be, you know, ultimately very, very beneficial for you. So in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, uh, currency correlations, they, you know, they can actually be stronger week for days, once, weeks, months, or even years. Uh, they can and will develop into intermarket relationships once you start to see their, you know, their, their impact they have on other uh, instruments in different asset classes. However, they always do eventually change. Nothing ever lasts for, uh, forever. Nothing's ever fixed you know, in the ground in terms of markets. And sometimes it can change when you least expect it, okay, or something happens that drives that change, you know, so 18 months ago, you know, we had the kind of COVID crash and a change there and lockdowns that, you know, change some sort of particular relationships, you know, and it says they can change for many different reasons and, and the reasons they change can include anything from, you know, changes in interest rates, okay, certainly within their FX paths. maybe there are shifting monetary policies, all right, from, uh, you know, from central banks and governments, or it could be a collection of economic or political events, okay, that are reshaping traders' sentiment. And, you know, you will start to notice and re see these new particular uh, correlations and intermarket relationships, you know, occur. You know, it's very, you're only very fortunate because, you know, things, certainly things like intermarket analysis and term market relationships, you know, it just doesn't happen like that overnight. It might actually happen over, you know, a few days, a few weeks, maybe even a few months that gives you an idea and opportunity to sort of, you know, as part of your analysis, start to recognize these occurring and actually how you can utilize them to, to, to help yourself. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, if you've got any uh, particular questions, okay, you know, you can contact Admirals, all right, okay, you can uh, email us there at globaladmiralmarkets.com. If you've got any particular questions or thoughts, you know, your account representative will be very uh, happy to, to help change it. So, why don't we have a little look at uh, the, the charts, okay, just for the, uh, for the last few minutes, we can just uh, do that. So, uh, why not just bear with me for a second, and uh, we'll do that just to, to, to finish up. So, just uh, bear with me a second, ladies and gentlemen.
So, but so you know what I have here is you know what I've done is you know I've built a you know just a profile there in the uh, Admiral's platform you know in its intermark relationships, uh, and what it's there for is to is to just give us a little bit of you know an idea, hopefully give a little bit of a help and a sort of you know uh, a view of the existing existing some of those existing uh, intermarket relationships or currency correlations, and um, you know here what we can see here is. Hopefully you can see on the daily chart there, I've got, you know, this is the euro sterling against the pound Swissy. And notice how I have them above each other, because actually when I do that, what I can do is you can start to see the inverse correlation very quickly there, can't you? Hopefully, let's get yeah, from the drawing to a look there. Let's bring it up. So hopefully you can see that, you know, um, a price was coming down effectively, you know, went into a, a little bit of a, a range before it rallied up. You know, and, and so did, you know, Pound Swiss did the exact opposite, okay, you know, rallied up, went into a, uh, into a small range before it dropped down, okay. And remember what I was saying is that, you know, you can see, you know, correlated trends, correlated reversals, when you're seeing that happen, that's, you know, that's, that's, that's good information to have, it's useful. Hopefully, you know, if you're a new trader, you can see how that can help you, that can give you just a little bit of confidence when you're seeing one particular position, you know, existing or creating in one other, well then basically then you can start to have a, an idea as, as to actually how it will, how it will particularly, uh, how it will particularly play out. Let's have a little look at uh, one of the ones is that uh, we, which we didn't really. So I'm just going to uh, to that see if we can move on here. Bear with us. Is that here we go? So uh, what we have here, this is a four-hour chart, but I'm just showing you that. That you know, doesn't really matter that much about the the time frame. And what this is is this is the euro against the US dollar, which we looked against the dollar Swiss franc. But what also it is correlated against is, of course, is the dollar index chart itself. Remember, the dollar index, dollar index chart is basically a basket of currencies against the US dollar and gives you an idea of the strength of the US dollar. But the dollar index, I think it's made up about 57, 58% of the euro, okay, and then a few of the other currencies. So there is a very strong negative correlation between the dollar index chart and the euro against the US dollar, not unsurprisingly. So, you know, here we can see that basically, you know, price, um, price rallied, okay, dropped, it's rallying again, you know, and on the uh, euro price, you know, dropped, it rallied, and it's dropping again, okay, and hopefully you can just see that, you know, there's that, there's that correlation, there's a pretty strong correlation. So, you know, you're getting a correlation between the euro dollar and the dollar Swiss franc, and also between them and the uh, the dollar index, okay, and that, as I said, that can just be useful for you. When you're starting to see breakouts, okay, what you should be seeing is, you know, if you're getting a breakout in the dollar, you should hopefully be seeing it across the dollar index, across the euro dollar, across the dollar Swiss franc, maybe across other dollar pairs as well. But, you know, if the breakout fails across the three of them, you know, well, then actually you start seeing, you know, there's a fake out there, it's a false breakout, and that in itself can be enormously helpful to, to basically to sort of, you know, give you a little bit of, uh, you know, a bit of forewarning about what might actually be, um, be occurring. Uh, just finish off. I've got you know I've got dollar CAD here and you know the uh, uh, oil here. Okay, and hopefully what you can see there is you know it's um, effectively dollar CAD rallied up and is now effectively drifting away. Uh, and uh, oil basically dropped and now is basically rallying up there. Okay, once again you know there is that there is that effectively you know correlation there. Remember dollar CAD. Okay, so if dollar CAD is dropping, that means the Canadian dollar is strengthening, and that's happening at the same time as oil rising. That shouldn't really be a massive surprise. Okay, you know, there's a real strong correlation between oil and the uh, the Canadian dollar, and also to a lesser one between uh, oil and the US dollar as well. Super. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope that's um help to give you just a little bit of understanding of currency correlations and also wider intermarket relations, all right, and relationships and how you can use that in your analysis. You know, as I said, you know, if you're a completely new trader, it might be new to you, but I can assure you, just go away, study, have a little look at these things. And what you'll see is that you'll find that there are those relationships there. They can actually be enormously helpful, all right, in terms of just you know, helping you with timing your trades, helping you ensure that you are, you know, you're in trading the right trends or that there's, you know, there's a reversal, this pattern is being correlated across those, you know, particular uh, instruments that work with it as well. So, you know, uh, I hope you found that useful. I hope you can take that away and start to have a little look at it in your own particular trading. As uh, as always, okay, I, I wish you the very, very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I look forward to, to speaking to you soon. Take care and trade well, everybody. Cheers. <laughs>